Corporations are allowed to finance with their receivables. Remember, their accounts receivable is an asset, and they can use that as a form of financing. It will be with or without recourse. And we're talking about accounts receivable here, not notes receivable. Financing with receivable, the first thing that the accountant must determine when they, they're analyzing their source document, was it a sale or was it just a secured borrowing? Well, in order to be classified as a sale, three criteria must be met. The assets must be isolated, the transferee has the right to pledge the asset, and the transferor has given up control. And who's who? The transferor is the seller, the transferee is the buyer. So factoring receivables, when you hear the term factoring, we're thinking about those accounts receivable. What is a factor? It's going to be a bank, financial institution, could be a collection agency. They're buying receivables for cash. That factor then handles the billing and the collection of the receivables, but of course they're going to charge you a fee. So what's the difference Re with and without recourse? If it's with recourse, that means the seller's going to retain some of the risk, but in, in return for retaining some of that risk, it's a way to get your factor fee a little bit lower if you're willing to take on that risk. So what risk are we talking about? We're talking about returns. So you sell your accounts receivable to a factor, they go through collection process, some of it is determined to be uncollectible, that factor has the right to return some of it to you, that is recourse. So looking at examples, same example, we're going to use the same numbers. Now, in practice, the fee usually is lower if it's with recourse, but for this example, it's important to see side by side the same numbers. How do I record the journal entry differently? If with recourse, I have 3,000 liability, meaning I've sold 60,000 of my receivables, but the factor has the right to return up to 3,000 of them to me in this example. Without, there is no recourse. It's a true sale. The factor takes the burden of uncollectability. So let's look at some numbers here. Same example. I'm going to sell 60,000. The day I sell them, I get 86% of that. The factor is going to pay me immediately. They're going to hang on to 14%. Of that 14%, I'm really going to only get 10%. So I'm selling 60,000 total. I could possibly get is, is 96% because they're going to charge me that 4% fee. But then we have to look at the liability also. So selling for less than face value or net realizable value, I'm going to have a loss with it when I factor my receivables. The key difference to the journal entries is right here in red, recourse liability. So if it's with recourse, here is my journal entry, and what am I doing? I'm simply plugging the information I have. I take the accounts receivable 60000 off my books. I record my recourse liability because the factor has the right to return 3,000 of it to me. I, I know I get 86%. That's 51,600. The receivable will be that 14% less the 4% fee, and I simply plug my journal entry to balance to calculate my loss. With Without recourse, you're not going to have that recourse liability. So to balance the journal entry, it is simply a larger loss. Here is the key difference. Am I recording a liability? Now look, notice the loss is larger with the sale with recourse because of that liability. Now, sale versus borrowing, three criteria must be met for a sale to, to occur. Again, these are important to put in your notes. The assets are li isolated from the transfer or the seller. The transfer E, the buyer, has the right to pledge those assets, and the transfer or gives up control of transferred assets. If these criteria are not met, it is not a true sale. It's not a true factoring. It's simply borrowing secured borrowing, you put your accounts receivable up as collateral.